Hello everybody and welcome to Let's Play Civilization V. I'm Bone Canoe 86 and I am pleased to bring you the first Bone Canoe Let's Play of 2016. Oh man, I am very excited about this. I have been playing a lot of Civ V and I am looking forward to um to uh getting uh getting this started. All right, and we today we are going to play as the fine people, the fine people of China. Yeah, I thought about it a lot, and I had a lot of suggestions. Um, but I'm going to go with China because China is very um, is very uh, um, they're pretty good for a lot of things. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um, oh yeah, I was trying to port in a colonization map. Um, I'll talk more about that later. We're going to play on a fractal map because they are unpredictable and a lot of fun. We are going to just go with a, a standard map. Difficulty level, we are going to play on Emperor. Because anything above Emperor is very easy, doesn't have much of a challenge. Even King, which says it's hard, is not that hard. But Immortal, and especially Deity, are the, the AIs are just cheaty good. So I don't want to give myself that much of an insane insanity. So I'm going to go with Emperor. Alright, so that is what I'm going to choose. And Game Pace, I like to play on Epic. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't. They like to play on um, Normal, or even Quick sometimes. But I feel... With Epic, it feels more like you're playing... I feel like Civilization has to be long. It has to take a long time, and you have to progress through the ages slowly, because if you if you go slower than that, you're going to just um, rush through the ages, and you don't get a real time to experience any of them. So, going with that, we're going to look at our advanced setup to make sure everything is okay. Um, yes, everyone else is random. Uh, we're going to take untick that. Complete kills means that you have to kill not just all of their cities, but all of their units in order to win. So we're just going to get rid of that because, you know, if there's like a one warrior on the map somewhere, it just sucks. But everything else is going to be uh, standard. Um, I'm going to start at the beginning. Emperor. Yep. All this has been chosen. All victory conditions enabled. And everyone's random. I once forgot to look at the advanced setup after playing a game, and I got two rushes. It was very uh, strange. But anyway, we are going to start. My goodness, I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. Also, by the way, the Chokanus, which are the replacements for um, crossbowmen, are... So awesome. They are baller. Uh, the main difference between them and other uh, units of the uh, time period is that they uh, have two shots each, you know. And having two shots each is a real advantage, I don't have to tell you. But also, the paper maker, um, not sure if that's a replacement for anything. I honestly forget off the top of my head. But it gives you um, plenty of science. Actually, yeah, it's the replacement for the library. And it basically is a library that also gives you gold. So as you might imagine, this is good for, uh, good for a science victory, which is usually my uh, go-to. Okay, let's look at our starting uh, area. A lot of... We have some hills, I can see. We're going to have floodplains over here. We have ivory, and we have spices. We don't have any uh, any big food resources right here, but we're going to be able to grow into floodplains. So I think we're just going to settle in place for our glorious capital of Beijing. There we are. Um, It's always a question when you start what how you want to open we are going to start Monument first and then Scout. All right. Uh, all right, start taking a look around, seeing uh, what we can see. Uh, let's go for Pottery first. That's usually a pretty safe uh, starting tech. So 
we're just going to let that uh, let that begin. Man, oh man, I am hyped for this. Well, I didn't want to go there. Oh, that's okay. Ooh, we already found a natural wonder, Grand Mesa. Uh, for those of you who don't know, whenever you find a natural wonder, your happiness goes up by one instantly. It's quite nice, and we have a city state right on our doorstep, so. We're going to go see uh, who it is. It might be somebody who is going to help us. Oh, Maddie. Oh, I've walked your territory. I'm sorry. A militaristic um, city-state. Great thing about them. Every city-state gives you certain bonuses. Owl Maddie, being a um, militaristic city-state, will occasionally give you units if, you like, if they like you. So that is not the best benefit in the world, but it's not terrible. You know, it it can actually come in quite useful at times. So, right now, pretty early on, we're just scouting around to see what's in the area, and we're also contemplating a uh, second city location. Not that we're going to settle right away. This isn't Civ 3. In Civ 3, Settler Spam paid off. In this game, though, you want to build a little bit before you settle, and then build up a little bit more. Ooh. You know what? We have a candidate already. If we have fish, and we have gold, and ivory, hills, more fish. This is an area. Oh, hi, Pedro. We have Brazil in our game. Okay, Brazil tends to be culture-focused, so we're going to have to... Um, Make sure our culture is good to counter it. Ooh, ruins. What kind of goodies are we going to get today? Can't wait to find that out. As you see, since we are on um, Emperor, you start at a tech disadvantage. Everyone uh, comes in with four techs. So we do have to play a little bit of catch-up. Ooh. Well, that is the nation of Ethiopia. We haven't met them yet, but we will next turn. Uh, they, Their big thing is they are religious, and they almost always form Eastern Orthodoxy, so we're going to be very we're going to be very lucky if we can even hold a have a prayer of beating them in religion. <laughs> a prayer of beating them in religion. Yes, very funny. You're clever. Okay. So, I kind of want to walk back now. We have Tender up here, so that pretty much confirms we are in the northern hemisphere of this world. I don't want my warrior to get too far away, because it's never too long before the barbs start spawning. And uh, once that happens, we're going to want to have some uh, defense forces close at hand, or else uh, things life is going to be made very difficult in our empire. Uh, also one thing to think about is what, uh, policy, what social policy you want to open with, but, um, we'll worry about that when we get a little bit closer to it. I am leaning towards tradition for this game, although, um, ooh, here's another candidate. But I want to look and see what's on the, uh, other side first before committing to, uh, any particular location. So our scout is here. Is almost going to be here, rather. Alright, we got pottery, which means we can build a shrine. Um, I don't think I'm going to actively go for a religion. If I get one, just as the, na just as, um, the natural course of events, then sure, why not? But um, until then, I uh, unless that happens, it's not a priority to me. Just because we're never going to be able to outcompete uh, Ethiopia in the uh, religious department. Keep in mind their version of the monument. Uh, I forget its name, but it gives you not just the culture the monument gives you, but it gives you two faith, which is twice what a shrine gets you, so you're not going to be able to... You're going to really have to go nuts. See? Look at that. They already founded their pantheon. Uh, culture from pastures. Um, 
one handy thing is you go here and you look to see uh, where pastures are developed. And uh, sadly, I at the last plantation, where is the pasture? Where is the pasture? Okay, well, if I wasn't such a dummy, I could find where pastures were and show you what they, um, oh, there they are. That's your horses, your cattle, and your sheep. So, so far, it doesn't seem to be too helpful for me if I end up getting that when I get the religion, because the pantheon, I believe, carries over when your religion is formed. However, I might have horses. Oh, look, there is cattle, so we're at least going to get some benefit of that when that watches over us, which is going to be good because we need couch culture to counter Brazil. They're going to be uh, pretty big now. I'm thinking my cities might be might be here and over here somewhere. And another benefit of that is I'll be able to trade with Ethiopia without worrying too much about barbarians. Now, I could expand fast. And that liberty is good for that. It gives you some culture. You build pyramids. And then you go down there to get your settler. You go down there to get your work. Tradition. Uh, hmm. It increases more expansion than the cities that you have. Gives your capital culture. And... Um, you tend to, hmm, you know what, I usually go tradition, but I'm feeling, I'm feeling liberty. I'm feeling liberty here. It doesn't necessarily give you the culture boost right away, but it gives you a culture boost in the long term. Because I actually think that I want to have uh, several cities here. Now, um, what... I've been told by a lot of friends of mine is you want to uh, basically get your uh, I'm gonna send him over here you want to get three cities until you get your national college built uh, my good friend Ryron says this um, oh hey Cape Town Cape Town is maritime which means they provide you food in your capital if they like you so that's always good. Um, granary is good for city growth. We're going to do that. We're not going to worry about a shrine right now because I fully expect to not be able to have or maintain my own religion. So we're going to hold off on the shrine for a bit. But granary growth is good. Let's take a look at our city. It auto-chooses where to put people in the best spots. It tends to default towards food, even with default focus. But this is fine right now. We have a pretty good thing going on. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm doing is scouting out the um, nearby area. Because yeah, I might want four or five cities relatively early. Which is the way I used to play Civ 3 a lot, but it's not really the way that I've been playing Civ 5. But if this was Civ 3, I would already have a settler out. That's just how things worked back then. But that's a sure way to be screwed now. Oh, boy. Uh, Wittenberg. Oh, they are a religious city-state, which means that um, they'll give you faith if you're friends with them. Now, if I manage to... And they always give you a little gift when you first meet them, which is very nice, but it's not really going to help us. Um, if I help them out of a jam and get, and get a religious bonus... Oh, hi, first barbs. Hello. But yeah, if I help him out of a jam and get our first um, bonus, then I might be able to get a Pantheon and get a religion, but I'm not going to be banking on that. Now that might change my settlement plans. Because if I put a city close to them, huh, I have to think about this now. Maybe it was a mistake to go to tradition. I mean, liberty was what I mean. But I could always change, you know. Because, um... I got one culture in every city. Get three culture in the capital. Hmm. Well, we have eight turns to the side. And I can walk around. Ooh. 
There's a mountain down there. Might want to settle near a mountain. Yeah, get you. Yeah, we got hurt more than them, but the thing is they rarely leave their camps when they're in it. So what we can do is simply uh, heal up. Ooh, archery. All right, but um, if you settle next to a mountain... Oh, we're probably screwed now. Uh, let's try to run away. We might not get to run. We might not get very far. But if you settle next to a mountain, you will eventually be able to get uh, an observatory, which is a big boost to science. That doesn't come until much later, but that is okay. Uh, let's see. Let's get animal husbandry. And let's get writing after that, and then let's get mining. See, you hold down your um, hold down shift, and you can get all these things in the order you want to get them. In fact, if I really wanted to be silly, I could sit here and plan out the entire tech tree of the entire game. But that's excessive, especially because you don't know what the conditions are going to be later down the road. This is what starts to happen. They want you to build an embassy. They want to build an embassy in your capital and pay you for it. But I like to wait until I get writing so that the embassies can be mutual. Alright, we really are trying to... Okay, I think we might be able to survive this. Uh, so, we are going to run here. And, uh, we're going to try to get away. Now, will he survive? Will he die? Where will we take our next city? These are all questions that you will find out next time. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am going to call this the end of the first episode here. I want to thank you very much for watching. I'm very excited about this Let's Play. I'm very happy that we're doing this. And see you soon for episode two.